Hey, praise the Lord. It's Brother Clinton once again. Welcome back to the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. In John chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship the Father must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And that's what we're here to learn to do. Praise the Lord. You know, the scripture says also, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Praise the Lord. So it's very important that we abide in the doctrine of Christ. I'm thinking right now of something that Paul instructed T Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, he said, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. It's very simple. Jesus Christ gave a doctrine or a teaching unto his apostles to teach in the churches and to preach in the world and to teach in the churches. And that doctrine is called the doctrine of Christ. It's also called the doctrine of God. It's also called the doctrine of the apostles or the apostles' doctrine. That is the teaching or the doctrine that we must abide in in order to abide in Jesus Christ. If we abide in some other teaching or some other doctrine, then it's not the power of God unto salvation anymore. It's just some religious nonsense, you see. But the Bible says that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And so if we keep it pure as it was given by Jesus Christ to his holy apostles and as it is preserved for us in the Holy Scripture, then it is the power of God unto salvation, and we will save not only ourselves, but also them, them that hear us. But if we add something to or take away from the doctrine of Jesus Christ, then it's not the power of God unto salvation anymore. It's just a religious doctrine. It's, it becomes food for denominations, and that's all that it's worth. It's, that's all that it's good for. It's religious entertainment, and it profits nothing else. So we must abide in the doctrine of Christ. If we don't abide in the doctrine of Christ, then we don't have God. This is what the scripture says. And you've heard me say that many times. The reason that I'm talking to you about this is because of a passage of the scripture that was brought up to me by a brother today. And he's just recently come into the faith. He's been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Ghost. And he was raised for, for years and decades in the same false gospel nonsense that most of us, or if not all of us, were exposed to for many years of our lives. And because of this, he, he knows the truth now, but he's having some difficulty explaining the truth or ministering the truth to people that he has known for many years who were raised up in the Trinitarian doctrine. Okay, for those of you who know me, you know this ministry, you know that I'm a Christian and that Christians don't believe in a triune God or a trinity of persons. The doctrine of the Trinity is a, is a Babylonian doctrine that was adopted by the Roman Catholic Church and has been adopted by most, if not all, of her Protestant daughters. And I should say, if not all, because there are some Protestants who don't believe the Trinity, but very few. Most Protestants believe in the Trinity doctrine, and, the, and where they got it from is their mother, the Roman Catholic Church. It's not in the Bible. There's no Trinity of gods in the Bible. Um, the, the doctrine of the Trinity is not found in the Scripture anywhere. Not one single verse of the Scripture mentions any Trinity of persons. Uh, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Eternal Son, co-equal, co-eternal, co-existent. All that nonsense is completely Catholic. It has nothing to do with the Scripture and is not found in the Scripture anywhere. But the, the, the unfortunate reality is that even though it's not in the Scripture, the vast majority of people that profess to be Christians believe this Roman Catholic Babylonish, Babylonish doctrine of the Trinity. And the, the reason that they believe it is because, like I was preaching in the pulpit just a, a couple of weeks ago, is that we were all given a gift from this that, that, that whore, Mystery Babylon, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. She loves to give gifts. She loves to keep people happy. She loves to keep them smiling. She loves to preach them happy. And we were all given a gift by her <clears throat> in our youth. And that gift was a pair of colored glasses. And those colored glasses, when we put them on, causes everything we see to be impaired and to, and to be perceived in a way different than it actually is. 
And that's why she gave us those glasses when we were babies. And so that even when we come to the scripture, we're reading the scripture, but we're reading it through the colored glasses that were given to us by Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, so that we can't see the scripture as it's written. We, we can only see the scripture through the deception or the, the distortion of those colored glasses that were given to us. And so what we need to do when we come to the scripture is to remove the colored glasses that were given to us by that great whore of Babylon and read the scripture as it's written. And if we will do that and obey God, of course, it's really very simple. And I say obey God because the word of God says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves, James 1.22. So, and the scripture testifies of that all throughout. When you read the scripture, the word of God, if you are disposed to obey the word of God, then God will give you light and revelation. As it is written, in thy light shall we see light. But if you refuse to obey the word of God, when God commands you to do something, then you bring blindness upon your own self. It's not God blinding you, it's you blinding your own self. This is the way the word of God has, has been ordained from heaven, that those that will disobey it will bring blindness upon themselves, and therefore the word of God is a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to them that are disobedient. You see? So, having said that, come with me to the fifth chapter of the book of Acts, and I want to share something with you. Many people use this passage of Scripture, many people in the churches who believe in the Trinitarian doctrine, which is not in the Bible, because they still have their colored glasses on, and they, they can't read the Scripture as it's written. They have to read it through the perception that was given to them by the colored glasses that, that their mother gave them. See, But if we take off those glasses, we can see very clearly. This passage of the Scripture in Acts chapter 5 is used by very many to try to teach people the Trinitarian doctrine. But... It doesn't teach any Trinitarian doctrine at all, as is the case with all of the Scripture. So let's read Acts chapter 5 from verses 1 through 4. It says, But a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias... Why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost, and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Praise the Lord. This is a very simple passage of the scripture. For those of you who are not familiar with the scripture, it's talking about a man named Ananias and his wife who sold a certain possession, and then they lied about the money that they got for it, and they brought part of the money and laid it at the apostles' feet instead of, instead of well, instead of giving all the money or instead of just being honest and saying, we, we decided to keep this part, but we're going to give this part, which was their right to do. Instead of doing that, they, got, they pretended to be religious, and they lied. They lied to Peter, and in Peter was the Holy Ghost. Okay, Because those of us who are Christians, we have the Holy Ghost in us, Jesus Christ. In Christ in you, the hope of glory, as the Scripture says. And so, in lying to Peter, Ananias and his wife were lying to the Holy Ghost. And that is something that they paid a very dear price for. They're in hell right now, Ananias and his wife. They went to hell that day, and they're still in hell right now, and they will be in the fire of hell forever and ever. And so it came to pass that Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Okay. Whiles it remained, was it, not thy, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? And then he says, Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Okay, this is where the Trinitarian people have been confused and are spreading their confusion to others because they say, well, it says in one place the Holy Ghost and it says in another place God. So the Holy Ghost is fully God, um, which is the beginning of a deception. The Holy Ghost, it, the, the statement the Holy Ghost is fully God is not a lie, but it is worded in such a way as to accommodate a lie because the Holy Ghost is God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's who the Holy Ghost is. But Trinitarians believe that the Holy Ghost is a different God, called God the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And they believe that the Holy Ghost is not God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, but that it is another entity, 
uh, another divinity, uh, a, a divine person, which is co-equal with God the Father, uh, co-eternal with God the Father, and co-existent with God the Father. And that is, of course, a ridiculous lie that is found nowhere in the Scripture. But because they believe that, because they have those glasses on, those colored glasses from their mother, they can't see that the Holy Ghost is just very simply God. It's, what Peter said in this, in this passage of Scripture is very simple, and it's absolutely true. The Holy Ghost that was in Peter is the same Holy Ghost that is in me, and he is God. Okay? But he is not another God called God the Holy Spirit. He is the only true God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is the faithful witness. And there, you know, I've said many times, I, I don't call uh, Islamist Muslims because they're not Muslims, uh, because Muslims are servants of God. Um, so I call them Islamists, and they're very dishonest, and they say that they believe that Jesus was a prophet, but they obviously don't believe that Jesus was a prophet because they don't believe what he said. And so it is with Trinitarians. They believe that, they say they believe that Jesus is the Son of God, but they don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, because if they believed that Jesus was the Son of God, they would believe what he said. You see? Jesus said when he was praying in the 17th chapter of John to his Father, the Almighty God, and my Father, the Almighty God, he, he prayed and he said, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You see? So Jesus, the Son of God, was testifying in that prayer that he spoke openly in front of his disciples who wrote it down by the Holy Ghost so that we can read it. He was testifying openly that there is one true God, and that is the God that he was praying to, and that he himself, the man who was praying, is not a God, is not a deity. The man who was praying is not the only true God. He was praying to the one who is the only true God. And the one who is the only true God is in him, just like he is in me, and just like he is in you if you're my brother or my sister. You see? As Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, wrote, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. You see? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It doesn't say that he is a deity called God the Son fully God and fully man. The Bible doesn't say that. Trinitarians say that because they got their doctrine from their mother. You see, but we get our doctrine from our Father, those of us who are in Jesus Christ. That's the difference. You see, all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, saith the scripture. All thy children shall be taught of the Lord. But those that are Trinitarians are of the seed of the adulterer and the whore because they got their doctrine not from our father, but from their mother. That's the difference. You see, so Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, is a very simple passage of scripture wherein a man and his wife lied to an apostle of Jesus Christ, and in doing so, they lied to God, because God was in that apostle. You see, the Holy Ghost is God, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no other Holy Ghost except for the Spirit of God. God, the Almighty God. You see, there is no trinity of persons and there is no deity called God the Holy Spirit. That deity called God the Holy Spirit, the second per or the third person of the Trinity, doesn't exist. You see, so if you're in your churches and and you're, you know, you're worshiping the Holy Spirit, oh Holy Spirit, you know, come down, oh Holy Spirit, burn us up with your fire and all the ridiculous things that you say. And I don't mean to make light of it or make fun of it because it's not funny or light matter, but maybe that was a little sarcastic, but that but it's merited, it's due, it is meat. Because think about this. You are in your churches worshiping someone that you call the Holy Spirit. But if I ask you what's the name of the Holy Spirit that you're worshiping, you can't tell me because it doesn't have a name. You see? Because it doesn't exist. The Holy Spirit that you're worshiping isn't the same Holy Spirit that's written of in the Holy Scripture. Because if it was, you would know his name. His name is Jesus Christ. He is the creator of all things, and he begat a son, and called his son by his name, and then filled his son with his own spirit. You see, so there is one God and one mediator between God and men, 
the man Christ Jesus. God was manifest in the flesh. One God who is a spirit, one Son of God who is a man. That's it. There is no Trinity. There is no three anything. There are no three persons. There is no one who is co-equal with God the Father. There is no one who is coexistent with God the Father. There is, there, there is no other God except God the Father. He is the only true God. And the Son of God, Jesus Christ, testified of that fact. So if you're believing that there are other entities that are fully God, other entities besides God the Father that are fully God and are co-equal with God the Father, then you, my friend, do not have God because you are not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. It's just that simple. That's not my opinion. It's not an interpretation. It is the word of the living God, literally and perfectly true. And it is written in the scripture hundreds of times. See, so when you read a, 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 a I do speak English. When you read a passage of scripture, like Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, and you, you leave the glasses on that your mother gave you so that you can't see, and you're imagining that the Holy Ghost is a God called God the Holy Spirit, fully God but fully separate from God the Father, you're believing that God the Holy Spirit is a person of a trinity and that God the Holy Spirit is not God the Father. You know, and, and your teachers teach that with the little diagrams, you know, the Father is not the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is not the Son, the Son is not the Father, you know, that little triangle, which is a symbol, a satanic symbol of the devil. And and you believe that because your Trinitarian teachers have taught you that. You see, you believe that the Holy Ghost is not God the Father. That's a lie. It's a straight lie. The Holy Ghost is God the Father. Listen to the scripture. When Jesus Christ walked on the face of the earth, he was filled with the Holy Ghost, was he not? His Father and my Father, his God and my God, anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all those, all those that were oppressed of the devil. He was anointed when he was baptized by John in the Jordan River. His father spoke from heaven and said, This is my son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And, well, he said, Hear ye him a different time. But he said, This is my son, in whom I am well pleased, when, when he was baptized in the Jordan River. And God anointed his son with his spirit on that day. There is no trinity there. The only three persons that are involved in that scene at Jesus' baptism are one God and two men. One God and two men, Jesus and John. Those are the only three persons that are involved. Okay? One God who is a spirit and two men, Jesus and John. And God anointed his son, Jesus Christ, with his spirit, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And what did Jesus Christ call that spirit that was in him? Time after time after time after time after time. My Father... The Father is in me. The Father, it is he that doeth the works. The Father, he gives me the words that I speak. The Father, the Father, the Father, the Father in me. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. How was the Father in him? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of your Father, if you're a Christian. You see? The Holy Ghost is God the Father. The Holy Ghost is the one, according to the scripture, when in Luke 135, when Gabriel spoke to Mary and said that she was going to conceive in her womb, she said, how is this going to be? Because I know not a man. The angel said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, and therefore that holy thing that shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. God. What God? The only true God. The one that Jesus Christ called his Father. The Holy Ghost is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not an interpretation. This is what the Bible says very clearly and repeatedly. You see? So if you will take off your Trinitarian glasses and you will allow yourself to just read the Scripture as it is written, you will see the plain truth of the Scripture. The Holy Ghost is God. But He is not the, the invented God of the Babylonish Roman Catholic Protestant system that is supposedly... God the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, distinct from the Father, but 100% God, fully God, but yet not God the Father. That's ridiculous. No such God exists. No such God is mentioned anywhere in the Scripture. The only true and living God 
that there is is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said of himself, he said, Is there a God beside me? I know not any. So if God Almighty, who knows all things, doesn't know any other God, then that shows us that there is no other God. That there is no God called God the Holy Spirit. And if you're worshiping in your church a God that you call God the Holy Spirit, but your, your, your deity called God the Holy Spirit doesn't have a name, then you're worshiping devils, my friend. Because the Bible says that the things that the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice unto devils and not unto God. And if you are worshiping an entity whose name you do not know, then you are worshiping devils. God did not command his people to worship a deity who will not reveal his name to us. And your deity called God the Holy Spirit has no name. Why? Because it doesn't exist. And if you're worshiping a deity that doesn't exist, who do you think is receiving that worship? When you're in your churches with your bands and your concerts by, you know, Hillsong and all those other satanic groups who teach you to call down fire from heaven to burn yourself up, who teach you to desire to be baptized with fire, being baptized with fire is being cast into hell. Did you know this? Look in the scripture. In Matthew chapter 3, verses, I think, 16 and 17, or maybe verses 11 and 12. I have to look it up to show you. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, I believe it's, it's verses 11 and 12. And the scripture will tell you very clearly that being baptized with fire means to be destroyed in hell. That's what being baptized with fire means. And so these people in these, in these satanic musical groups who are teaching you to call down fire from heaven and ask God to destroy you in hell, who are teaching you to worship a deity called God the Holy Spirit whose name you don't know, they are deceiving you. They are sent from your mother, the same one who gave you the colored glasses that causes you to think when you open the Bible that there is a, a, a deity called God the Holy Spirit when no such deity is mentioned anywhere in the Holy Scripture. There is no God the Holy Spirit. That God doesn't exist. Your teachers have taught you that that God is fully God and that it is co-equal with God the Father, but that it is not God the Father. Therefore, your teachers have lied to you because there is no such God. The only true God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And He is the Holy Ghost. So if you have the Holy Ghost in you, you speak with other tongues and prophesy, you do not have a third person of a trinity inside of you. You have the Spirit of your Father inside of you. And His name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. This is why His Son is also called Jesus Christ. Because He got His name the Son of God got his name by inheritance from his Father. As the scripture says, For by inheritance he hath obtained a more excellent name than the angels. The, the name of the Son of God is Jesus Christ because he got his name from his Father. And his Father is the Holy Ghost. God is a spirit. As I began to speak to you in the beginning of this video, Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit, and they that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Father is God. There is no other God. God is a spirit. God the Father is a spirit. Hear these words. It is the word of God. God the Father is a spirit. He is holy. He is the one who has said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Therefore be ye holy in all manner of conversation, conducting your conversation in, in, uh, on this earth in fear. Because you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from the conversation of your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot, and blemish. The Lamb is the Son of God, and the Father who sent Him is the Holy Ghost who is in Him. 
God was manifest in the flesh. You see, so there is no trinity and there is no deity called God the Holy Spirit. That deity doesn't exist. And if you have been worshiping that deity and asking it to baptize you with fire, then stop doing that. If you've been worshiping that deity and calling it Shekinah, stop doing that. The word Shekinah is not in the scripture. It's not in the Hebrew scriptures. It may be a Hebrew word or a derivation of a Hebrew word, but it's not in the Hebrew scriptures. None of the prophets of God ever wrote the word Shekinah in the scripture anywhere. It doesn't mean the glory of God like your lying teachers have told you. Shekinah is the name of a devil. And if you have been calling down the Shekinah glory and asking that your deity called God the Holy Spirit to baptize you with fire, then you have been worshiping devils and you have been inviting destruction. You have been begging God to destroy you and burn you up with the fire that shall, quen that shall never be quenched. That's what you've been doing. So stop it. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, if you desire to enter into the kingdom of God, stop it. Stop worshiping the Babylonian trinity of gods and worship God, the living God, the only true God, in spirit and in truth. In spirit, according to his spirit, okay? Not another person of a trinity that he has conversations with and that's co-equal with him. No, his spirit, the spirit of God, in spirit and in truth. Where's the truth, my friends? You'll find it here, the Holy Bible, King James Version. If the Spirit of God is speaking to you and he's speaking to you something different than what's written on these pages, then it's not the Spirit of Jesus Christ and it is lying to you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May this message be a blessing to you, my brother who wrote me today, and to many out there as well who have been blinded by that Trinitarian doctrine from the devil that you may begin to see the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ shining forth into your heart, and that you may believe on the Son of God, and that you may obey the gospel of Jesus Christ and be saved. As the apostles preached, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus Christ said that the spirit that he was talking about among his disciples, he said, he is with you and shall be in you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The same spirit that was in Jesus Christ, his father, my father, his God and my God, the same spirit that was in him is in me and can be in you. And if you worship the father, then you must, according to Jesus Christ, you must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you are worshiping any other deity or if you're attempting to worship the living God in any other way except in spirit and in truth, guess where you're going to end up, my friend? It's a place called Tophet, where you're going to be burning with fire and the worm will never die. And the saints shall walk by on their way to the throne of God, and they shall look upon you, and you shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Because your fire shall never be quenched, and your worm shall never die. Repent, therefore, from the wickedness that you have been taught in the denominational churches, and believe the word of God. And I am here for you, if I may, have, if I may be of assistance to you on this pilgrim journey that we make through this world wherein we are strangers unto the throne of the, of, the, of, the, of, of the God of glory, of Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John saw one throne and one who sat on the throne, and his name is Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord.